Hey guys, this is Eric. I just wanted to come to you with a video um, in regard to the Asbury topic. You know, I've been talking about it here and there on YouTube and also on Facebook. And I wanted to just kind of read uh, read this out, what I put together. For some of you, it might be easier um, to have it read to you versus reading something that's long because a lot of people nowadays don't have the attention span or the desire or the time or the energy to read something that's lengthy that they are uh, more prone to have something read to them. So uh, I don't want to, you know, obviously disrespect anybody, but... Uh, for those of you who do find it hard to read, I want to do you a favor and just read this for you and help spark the conversation that's already been going on. As we see, there's a lot of opponents and a lot of pushback from people uh, who think, you know, that we're just spreading conspiracy theories and, and these other things. Uh, so I want to read just uh, what I wrote in regards to the uh, Asbury so-called revival and let me let me before I start let me just preface this by saying are there people genuinely having experiences maybe even genuinely getting saved or genuinely repenting I don't doubt that because the Lord is bigger than any of this the Lord is bigger than any plan of the enemy the Lord is bigger than any revival the Lord is bigger and just more amazing and, and providential and sovereign and merciful and gracious than all. So let's get that out of the way first and foremost. However, with that being said, I do believe, yes, this is manufactured in more ways than one. And I want to just go ahead and read this and we'll get into it. So... Asbury is definitely a manu manufactured revival. Asbury is hosting, which is now today. I, I made this post four days ago. Asbury is hosting the 200th anniversary of the Collegiate Day of Prayer. This has been promo promoted since at least November of 2022, but I've also seen reports of it going back to at least a year ago. February 8th is when their revival began. And they have announced it will end February 22nd, which was yesterday, Wednesday, which was also Ash Wednesday. Perfect timing as the Collegiate Day of Prayer is February 23rd. February 24th is Greg Laurie's... Look at that. I got a typo there. It says Gius there. I'm going to have to fix that typo. As a matter of fact, I could probably fix it. Hmm... I can't fix it right now. But February 24th is Greg Laurie's Jesus Revolution movie. And that comes out. Um, uh, see, I got a couple typos here. February 24th is Greg Laurie's Jesus Revolution movie. And that comes out, uh, you know, tomorrow. Which is about the Jesus People movement of the 70s. Like, you know, and the, this movement was headed by Lonnie Frisbee. Um, also, you know, Chuck Smith, a Calvary Chapel, Greg Laurie, he was a part of this movement as well. Um, so this movement was headed by Lonnie Frisbee, a known sodomite who died of AIDS March 12th, 1993. And we'll get back to that, why that date is important. Jonathan Rumi, who plays Jesus in The Chosen, and I put Jesus in quotes because he's not really Jesus. But he plays Jesus in The Chosen, also plays Lonnie Frisbee in the Jesus Revolution movie. There has been much information coming out about sodomites running around at Asbury, sodomites in leadership roles, sodomite students, sodomites singing in their worship sessions, and more. Sodomites are protected at Asbury, at least from what some of the reports are saying. There is video explaining how sodomites are are not to be converted or to have the gay prayed away at Asbury as well. So there's more. So again, March 12th, 1993 is when Lonnie Frisbee died. 30 years later, March 13th, Greg Locke is coming out with a new with a with a documentary called Come Out in Jesus Name. March 13th, 2023 is also the 10-year anniversary 
of Pope Francis being the Pope. Why do I bring up the Pope? Well, the Pope has been known to show his support for these ecumenical movements. Pope Francis gave an address and showed his support for the for the Together 2016 conference slash CCM con- concert that was held in Washington, D.C. Uh, July 6th, that was July 16th, 2016. I was actually going to go that day, but me and my wife got married that day and that was more important. So all glory to God for that. Just a little side note. Many of the ministry partners for the Collegiate Day of Prayer are yoked up with the Pope, like Louis Giglio of Passion, pa- Passion City Church and Passion Conferences, um, and Nick Hall of The Pulse. Did I mention, oh, well, there's others I'll, I can mention as well, but did I also mention that Asbury takes the Eucharist? Now we know the Eucharist is what the Catholic Church refers to. That's how they refer to as in regards to communion. As believers in, in Jesus Christ, Christians, we call it communion. But the Catholics call it the Holy Eucharist, and they take what's called transubstantiation. That's where they they believe that they're literally churning the the alcohol, the wine, whatever it is you may drink, the juice. That that they are literally churning it into the blood of Jesus, and they believe that they're taking the the cracker or wafer or whatever it is they might be eating, the bread. And turning that literally into the flesh of Jesus Christ. I kid you not. So, like I said, did I mention Asbury takes the Eucharist? Then I go on to say this is completely Catholic. (laughs) Many charismatic word of faith and NAR ministries are yoked up with the Popes and Rome, such as Billy Graham, Kenneth Copeland, Lou Engel, Todd White, Francis Chan, Rick Warren, IHOP Mike Bickle, and many more. There are now reports that Catholics are catching this fire. Now, going back up to mentioning um, about Lou Engel, for instance. Lou Engel is, he has a ministry called The Call and also Azusa Now. Lou Engel, they're one of the ministry partners for this Collegiate Day of Prayer. And not only that... um, he has given video and spoken about it in times past. Francis Chan, Rick Warren, Mike Bickle, they all are also guest speakers today for this 200th anniversary of the Collegiate Day of Prayer. Things to consider. There's video of Lou Engel out there kissing Catholics' feet. Um, you got Kenneth Copeland yoking up with um, with different Catholics. How what was the guy's name? He was one of the head, like one of the top Catholic guys. I can't even remember the guy's name right now. Um, but the, the the proof is out there. I mean, I could do a video. I might do a video, Lord willing, where I just show you all the proof because some sometimes some people are lazy. And they're not going to take your word for it. I don't expect people to take my word for it. But if I'm saying these things, why does it always have to be my responsibility to show you everything? It should be your responsibility, if you really care to know the truth, to look into these matters for yourself. You can look up, you know, uh, posts and videos about Kenneth Copeland yoking up with the Catholics. You know, Ty White, and you know, he's Kenneth Copeland is his spiritual daddy. You know, Mike Bickle, Lou Angle, Francis Chan yoking up with Catholics. I mean, come on. Uh, Louis Giglio, you can put a uh, search. Louis Giglio kiss, kisses the Pope. He kisses Pope Francis. Him and his wife, Shelley, went over to Rome, went over to the Vatican, and were kissing the Pope. I mean, come on. The, the proof is out there. All you have to do is look. Use your mind. Use your brain a little bit. And just type in... Kenneth Copeland, Catholics. I mean, is, is it really that... I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be a jerk right now. I'm really not. But is it really that difficult? 
Like, people really want you to spoon-feed them everything instead of being Bereans and doing their own due diligence. I've had to do my own due diligence on a lot of this. But it's there. So going back to Lonnie Frisbee and the Jesus People movement, Isaiah Saldivar and his friends had a Demon Slayer podcast where Mike Signorelli prophesied or boldly claimed that we are witnessing a Jesus People movement too in regards to what they are doing with all their demon slaying. Again, how interesting considering the movie was is coming out. I put coning out, so there's another typo there. At the Asbury Revival, there was a woman who was having a seizure and another woman who Greg Locke claims goes to his church and was trained by Daniel Adams, claiming that the, this woman's a forerunner, was attempting to cast out whatever devils she believed she was tormented by. This has been gaining a lot of coverage, and it's all perfect timing considering Locke's movie comes out March 13th. Again, 3-13-23, 10 years after the Pope was announced the Pope on 3 13 13 now the interesting thing about all that is is we know they don't do these things like haphazardly like everything is like determined by the days and and numbers they do everything like they, these people are huge into numerology so it, it wasn't a coincidence the day that they chose for Francis to become the Pope let's just be honest and he is a I don't know if he's the first but he is a Jesuit Pope on top of it and the Jesuits were instrumental in trying to stop us from getting the King James Bible I might add now there are reports of revival popping up everywhere expect the same to be said with Greg's movie being released well I guess both Gregs, because <laughs> it's Greg Laurie <laughs> tomorrow, and then Craig Locke just three weeks later. Interesting. So, yeah, expect the same. Uh, they are clearly taking these movements mainstream. And we've seen Fox News talking about the Asbury Revival, CNN talking about it. I mean, you can't go anywhere without hearing about it, it seems like, at least, you know, in the Christian world, and so on and so forth. Anyways, um, but what is the end goal? Well, whether many people, many of these people realize it or not, they are being used as pawns for the arrival of the Antichrist. Now, let me stop right there because I did not, I did not put this in the post. But let me show you. All right, so Left Behind, the Left Behind series, the newest one came out at the end of January. And it's called The Rise of the Antichrist. Very, very interesting. I just find that somewhat coincidental that, you know, we have this movie coming out. It just came out. And now you have all these other events coming out in regards to what I'm speaking about. So anyways, the false prophet is clearly here. The beast is about to be revealed. We see the man of sin comes with all signs and lying wonders. He will call fire down from heaven. He will be casting out devils. Jesus tells us that someone prophesying, casting out devils, and doing wonderful works in his name will still go to hell if they were never intimate with him. See Matthew seven twenty one through 23 We are seeing a very strong push for a one world religion. The ecumenical swing is in full effect. One of the main ways they do this is through the music. Greg Laurie admitted last night, now this would have been last Friday, because I made this post Saturday, but last Friday, Greg Laurie admitted that during the Jesus People movement is what birthed CCM, or Contemporary Christian Music. The music was birthed with the spirit of sodomy, because again, Lonnie Frisbee, the main guy from that movement, was a sodomite. This is the foundation of CCM music. That's why it all seems very just effeminate. CCM has been has been playing. I'm sorry. CCM has been played heavily at the Asbury Revival. 
as they offer up strange fire unto the Lord. Now, some of the CCM that I've heard played is Maverick City, Hillsong, Bethel, Jesus Culture, uh, possibly Elevation as well. I don't quote me on that one, but that, that's just a few names. Something to consider. Again, what is the Spirit of the Lord going to lead you to sing these songs by these heretics? I mean, at that point, you might as well just sing songs by the Beatles, by Madonna, by Little Nas X, you know? Why not? So, CCM shows are always extremely ecumenical. They are. I've, I've preached at so many. They're extremely ecumenical. The conferences, the concerts, they're all ecumenical. Aside from maybe like conferences like the G3 conference, which is like mainly just Calvin, like Reformed Calvinist Baptist. Um, you'll have professing Christians of all denominations, including Catholics, at these shows supposedly worshiping the Lord. If it's not obvious by now as to what's going on, I'd say the Lord may be giving some of you over to a strong delusion so that you will believe a lie. 2 Corinthians 6, 14 through 18. Be ye not unequally, unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Friends, we are getting ready to head into a deep dive of demonic deception, posing as the Christian faith. And one of the main ways they are going to pull this off is through deliverance ministries. Quote, unquote, deliverance ministries. Jesus told us there would be those doing this who are not his children. Everything that glitters is not gold. It's time to prepare yourselves for great tribulation. Look how those who speak and preach against this ecumenism are being demonized and labeled Pharisees, legalists, and possessing religious spirits. They are gaslighting believers into silencing them with threats that we have blasphemed the Holy Ghost because we dare try the spirits like we are commanded to do in 1 John 4, 1 through 3. These people who condemn and slander us will be the same ones who will have us killed or turned into the Antichrist and his demonic legion of soldiers. They will believe that he is literally Jesus in the flesh and we are blasphemers for seeing through this. Friends, prepare for real persecution. Persecution that we have never seen before in the United States. This push for revival is actually a revival of persecution that shall come upon all those who live godly in Christ Jesus. Brother shall betray brother. Just like Jesus told his disciples, they will put you out of the synagogues and will think they are doing God a service. Prepare your hearts, brethren. I love you all in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Your brother in Christ, Eric Joseph Love. And this is exactly what's going on, friends. They are preparing. Are you prepared? Are you prepared for what's coming on the scene? There's a lot more to go into uh, with this in regards to Lonnie Frisbee, the Jesus People Movement. Um, you know, I mean, there's so much, you know, and something I talked about recently, the power of suggestion, you know, the power of suggestion and using that is big in the deliverance world where you, you're telling people and you're making people believe that they're filled with devils, that they're filled with demons, so they almost like a placebo they begin to believe it and then they start acting out and they start manifesting the same could be said with revival I mean I'm, I'm seeing people who are respected in, in, in the street preaching world and you know Christian circles 
coming out in support of this and demonizing those, calling us conspiracy theories, who would dare say otherwise, who are using discernment, operating with discernment. They're trying to quench the spiritual gift of discerning of spirits and discernment. They're trying to quench the trying of spirits as the word of God commands us to do. Friends, these people are gatekeepers and I'm going to sh- I'm going to read another post that I shared in those regards. I shared this one 2 days ago. I said there's a lot of gatekeepers right now sharing their quote unquote experience from Asbury. Funny none of them are mentioning the fact they had established up to a year ago that Asbury will be holding the Collegiate Day of Prayer there, February 23rd, 2023, just one day after the university decides to end the revival. Hmm. I wonder why. Coincidence? I'll let you be the judge. Rick Warren is one of the main guests. Coincidence? I'll let you be the judge. Francis Chan is one of the main guests. Coincidence? I'll let you be the judge. Mike Bickle of IHOP is one of the main guests. Coincidence? I'll let you be the judge. Lou Engel of The Call and Azusa Now are one of the main endorsers. Coincidence? I'll let you be the judge. Jesus and ministry partners. Jesus Culture, Bethel Church, is one of the main ministry partners. And they were singing at the revival Asbury, they were singing Jesus Culture songs. Coincidence? I'll let you be the judge. Passion Conference, a.k.a. Louis Giglio, which that just took place back in January, um, is one of the main ministry partners. And coincidence? I'll let you be the judge. And with the Passion Conference, who do they focus on? 18 to 25-year-olds. They're focusing on the youth. They want to get them while they're young. They want to infect them with their ecumenism when they're young. <sighs> we gotta be. We gotta come out from all that, friends. We gotta come out from all these denominations. Come out from all of them and be separate. Stick to sound doctrine, yes, one hundred percent. But avoid ecumenism at all costs. There are many more questionable affiliations with this Collegiate Day of Prayer and Asbury as well. Uh, The main thing they all seem to have in common is Roman Catholicism, the Catholic Church, and Pope Francis' endorsement. Just like their predecessor, there's another uh, typo there. Just like their predecessor, uh, Billy Goat Graham, they all bow down to the Catholic Church. There's no separating Catholicism from this event. Oops. There's no separating Catholicism from this event. If any pastor, preacher, street preacher, or Christian try to defend this movement but fails to mention any of this, they are either completely ignorant and or not doing their due diligence to research and try the spirits, or they are straight up gatekeepers for Rome and or Satan himself. All of this is easily verifiable. You don't need to take a trip to Wilmore Asbury to see this. And you don't. You don't. I mean, all this is easily verifiable. So, yeah. What's the real reason they uh, shut down the revival yesterday? Oh, because Rick Warren and Francis Chan and Mike Bickle are going to be in town, right? Rick Warren, isn't he the guy trying to uh, create what's called Chrislam, merging the Christian faith and Islam together. And who is the mom of Islam? Oh yeah, Catholicism is. That's right. Look who he's shaking hands with. Alright guys. Um, I love you guys. God bless you. And there will be more to come. In Jesus name we pray. Amen.